welcome to Climate Check from BBC Weather. This time, we focus on the world's coldest and driest continent, Antarctica, a part of the world far away from the biggest carbon-emitting nations, yet a vital barometer of global climate change. The South Pole is warming up to three times faster than the average global rate, and eastern Antarctica was struck by an exceptional heat wave in March. The deeper the reds in this graphic, the more unusually warm it was. But what does a heat wave in one of the coldest places on Earth look like? Well, on the 18th of March, the Concordia Research Station recorded a temperature of minus 11.5 degrees Celsius. That may sound chilly, but it's 40 degrees above the average for the time of year. And just look at how that recording stands out on this temperature graph. It's likely to go down as the largest temperature excess above normal ever observed on Earth. These scientists are used to temperatures of minus 50 and they usually only venture outside in multiple layers with protective face coverings and thick gloves. They took this photo to highlight the extreme contrast to normal conditions there. Climate scientists agree that a warming world is making polar heat waves more common and severe. Something called an atmospheric river played a big part in this one. Antarctica is surrounded by a vast, cold ocean, but a stream of moisture fed in warm air, starting in the ocean near Australia, which flowed thousands of miles deep into the Antarctic interior, normally an ice desert, delivering low pressure, warmer air, cloud and abnormally heavy snowfall. The heat wave coincided with a spell of very low sea ice around the coast. This year's autumn sea ice minimum has been about 26% below normal and the second lowest in records dating back 44 years. Polar sea ice is important because it reflects sunlight. This is called the albedo effect. When temperatures rise, the bright white sea ice melts and that exposes more of the darker ocean, which soaks up more heat from the sun. This causes yet more ice melt and it's the main reason that the poles are warming faster than the rest of the world. Antarctic sea ice does vary significantly from year to year. What is more apparent is the loss of billions of tons of ice from ice shelves and glaciers over recent decades in Antarctica, contributing to rising global sea levels, currently rising at about 3.4 millimetres per year. If it continues at this rate, there are potentially devastating consequences. During the intense heat wave in March, the Conga ice shelf, roughly the size of Rome, collapsed after years of instability. This was the first ice shelf collapse ever registered in the area, and the most significant in 20 years. Have a look at these before and after satellite images. The Larsen Sea ice shelf on the Antarctic Peninsula is also vulnerable because of a process called hydrofracturing. This is when higher temperatures at the surface leads to increased ice melt that trickles down into crevasses and re-freezes, expanding and fracturing the ice. It's this process that led to the collapse of the Larsen A ice shelf in 1995 and Larsen B in 2002. What is happening at the very bottom of our planet will have ongoing and far-reaching implications right across the globe.